Scruffy. I just um, woke up, turned on the camera, I didn't even, um, well, rebel inside. Hey number ones, welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking. Today we're talking about armor and how much it can actually protect you from blunt impact or blunt damage. And we do see this, I mean people who play video games are really really familiar with this idea of any attack really can either be a cut, so a slash, it can be piercing or it can be blunt. Then, generally speaking, even uh, attacks with weapons that are mostly focused on like cutting, they still have a certain degree of blunt into them, you know, the sort of energy that is transmitted to the target. And generally speaking, today I'd like to talk about mail, I'd like to talk about plate, and understanding how much actual resistance they have against blunt. Because, you know, we talk about this all the time. Mail is great against slashing and cutting, it's good against piercing, but it's quite bad against blunt. But is it? Shall we actually try it? And how much of a difference is there between wearing plate without nothing else underneath, wearing mail without anything underneath? What happens when you get hit and how much of that blunt force is actually distributed into your body and goes through the armor? And on this channel I have said a few times that, you know, maces, warhammers are much better to dealing with people in armor. And I'd like to test it on myself. Now, of course, I need to be safe. Some of the things that happened today I was not expecting, I did not expect. And I have to say that in retrospect, as I look at it now, I haven't been as safe as I should have been. So uh, don't do this at home and this is not a clickbait. Do not repeat what I've done. But luckily nothing happened. It was risky, now I realize, and you'll see why. I think we can still draw conclusions and learn something from the data that I have gathered today as I experienced being hit multiple times with lots of different kinds of weapons while wearing plate, while wearing mail, just for comparison. Okay, so let's start with plate. As I'm wearing my breastplate, and it's made of medium carbon, heat-treated, hardened steel. So that's, you know, it's really, really good breastplate. And it's globular, so it's supposedly some of the force should be dispersed and sort of you should encourage weapons to glance off. Now, as you can see, we start light and then we increase the strength. And some of the attacks that we did, even with wooden weapons, would have hurt me a lot or would have hurt my friend a lot and never mind those with a katana, of course we had with metal weapons we were a little more careful, we don't really want to risk it too much but now one thing I'd like to point out immediately is the fact that the both the blades of the arming sword and the katana are not sharp, we're not being suicidal here and some people will ask why did you not go full force? This is not like full force. And the reason is that it's not that kind of test. We are not trying to see if we can break the armor. We are trying to see up to what point of strength and intensity I can take a beat still being comfortable. We don't want to cross that line because we want to see the difference comparatively. If I get hit in mail and I get hit in plate, what is the line of comfort? And I can already hear the typing of all those people that are typing, eh, my little three-year-old sister hits harder than that. My 97-year-old nanny it's harder than that yeah okay great go take a nap let the adults talk uh, at the end of the day it was very protective we felt absolutely nothing it's not a little bit of vibration particularly with blunt weapons but and it was actually interesting this is the part that I was talking about I was not expecting wooden weapons to freaking explode on me I thought they would break absolutely I thought like if we go strong enough 
you know, wooden swords will break. But I wasn't expecting to freaking explode, which is why this was a little bit of a hazard. And you know, we should have worn uh, protective glasses for our eyes. So don't imitate this. I don't want to give the wrong impression or the wrong example to the youth. Do not d do this at home. You know, something had flown towards my eyes i think it would have, could have been a completely different story so i'm glad that nothing happened but don't try this at home and next time i'm going to try something like this i'm going to have protection for my eyes but still it's interesting because the hit was strong and i hit my friend quite strongly we felt absolutely nothing the point of this video is what happened when we started testing the same thing with male without any padding underneath so as you can see i differently than what happened with plate i had to stop my friend quite early in the test because it, were already, it was already starting to hurt. And one thing that I have gathered is not only that, yes, it's true, blunt damage is a serious problem when, problem when you're wearing male, but it's actually more so than I had expected. In fact, the hardest hits that I could take, I could take them not because of the male, but I could take them because of the muscle and, and fat underneath that kind of cushioned them. Uh, it, when my friend hit me in the bosom, in the chest, I could take more beating. When he hit me on the belly, I could take it as long as I was prepared for it. But when he started hitting me in the parts such as this area here, where there isn't much meat and it's mostly bone and skin, oh, oh gosh, it, I had to stop him so early because it was already starting to hurt. And I could understand that if he did go with as much force and strength as he did when, he was, when I was wearing plate, he would have hospitalized me, he would have broken bone. I went into this test expecting a different result. I thought, you know, in the 13th century, we know that knights didn't wear any padding underneath male. They were just wearing tunic and male. It's, so far, this is what we have. In previous periods, yes, most likely people were wearing gambesons underneath, and in later periods, of course, you wear plate together with it. And today we saw how plate is absolutely not a problem. In fact, um, even when you're wearing just a, a, a lightly padded Armin doublet underneath, as long as you've got plate, that's still going to provide excellent resistance against blunt, probably even more so than I had anticipated. In fact, I think that blunt weapons against plate probably only work on the head, and I might actually test that. We might test the protective days of resistance of helmets and we're gonna try you know getting hit with that I, I might do it for a, for a following video but if you get hit on the chest if you get hit on the torso even with maces I don't think you're gonna feel much but male male is a problem I mean I would not want to go to war wearing just male and the idea of this specific bracket in time in the 13th century when we do know that knights went to war just wearing male without padded garments underneath. It really blows my mind. Think of the Romans. I mean, yeah, we do know that the Romans did wear Toracomagus underneath, so the Subarmalis, but it wasn't as thick as, I don't know, modern day full contact medieval sports. And I can see why there was a transition to Lorica Segmentata. In fact, I'm going to make a fully dedicated video onto Roman armor and how much Segmentata protects you, but I can already see that it being played, it definitely does provide a very good resistance against blunt, particularly on the shoulders. And that actually is extremely interesting because what I could gather today is that it's not the male is completely useless. Of course, that's not the case. Male is excellent. It prevents you from dying, but it really depends on when you, where you hit. If you hit again on the chest, it wasn't a big deal. So if you hit me with a sword full force on the chest, I can take it. If you hit me there, however, on the shoulders, you could very easily break bone, which then explains why the Romans doubled up the shoulders, both with male and, of course, with segmentata, because that must have been some of the crazy kind of injuries that some soldiers could get. Because at the end of the day, a strike from top to bottom is kind of the most natural way of attacking an opponent, I think, plausible and probable area or target is going to be the shoulder. And if you get hit here, even if you've got male, it's going to take you out of action. Now, of course, a Roman soldier has got a big shield. Let, let's not forget that. But if you do manage to bypass this shield, uh, then I, it makes sense the Romans doubled up here. And I can understand now that I've felt what it feels like to be hit somewhere around here. I understand why they would double it up. Uh, because again, I think just one layer of mail on your shoulders you're out of it. And it also explains how a plate starts to develop. And we do have, you know, the uh, very early spaulders in the 14th century and they actually start to reinforce that part. But still, it kind of scares me the idea that some people actually went to war just wearing a male shirt. Because again, yes, it's gonna keep you safe from piercing, it's gonna keep you safe from cutting. And again, on the piercing, I should put a little, a little note there because it kind of depends. Uh, in fact, very, very strong uh, arrows. You don't even have to go to the way, to all the way to the longbow arrows of the late medieval period already in the classical 
appeared and I'm making a video about this, some arrows could penetrate male, which is probably one of the reasons why segmentata was developed in the first place. But I think the other reason is to grant some degree of blunt protection or blunt resistance, because blunt is a problem when you're wearing armor, but it's not a problem when you're wearing plate. And it also explains why some Roman officers chose, like really high level officers, and we always see emperors and whatnot, they're wearing really plate, musculata. I think musculata would have been extremely expensive, which is why not the, the entirety of the Roman army couldn't afford it, but I think it would have been great protection against everything, really. I do believe in superiority of plate. Mail is great. I'm not trying to make a video to say, that, don't go away from this video thinking Metatron said mail is useless. I'm not saying this, mail is great but male on its own does have some weakness and today with this test I found out that it really depends on where on your body you're being hit. You shouldn't really think uh, well I've got male and male gives this amount of protection or from blunt damage. The level of protection that it will give you will be in combination with of course what you're wearing underneath and most importantly how your body is anatomically shaped and the areas that have more fatty tissue and the areas that have more muscular tissue. And in my case again I could take quite a lot of beating on my bosom and I'm, I'm not like a bodybuilder so I don't have a lot of muscle muscles on my chest. Imagine someone who's got some proper muscles on their chest. Again, you don't have to be a bodybuilder, but at least someone who trains every day, they can probably take a, a, a more of a beating. But again, you hit them with a mace here. I think they're out of action. Well, Noble Ones, if you liked this video, please thumbs up. And if you're not yet members of this community, become a Noble One. Subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. See you next week.